5.2 update uh, webinar. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the Industry Save 5.2 update. Um, we're going to uh, take you through, um, I'm Claire Epstein, I'm going to take you through a PowerPoint of all of the updates um, and then I'm going to turn it over to Gabe and Gabe's actually going to walk us through our demo site and show you the updates. And again, if you have any questions, just use that question feature and we'll be happy uh, to answer your questions for you. Uh, on the phone, as I mentioned myself, is uh, Claire Epstein, a Vice President of TRA. I'm very familiar with the industry safe software um, and I've helped clients uh, implement and assess their needs. Um, also on the phone is Gabe Tompkins. Gabe is a project manager at TRA. He uh, very much understands the industry safe software and can answer uh, detailed questions about the update. Um, as far as the update goes, uh, if you're a beta client, uh, you will have received uh, the update already. And I think that there are some people on this web the webinar who are beta clients. Um, and then if you're not a beta client, you should be receiving the update uh, by 4.15, uh, so by, by next Monday. Uh, the, uh, by ne early next week, the update will be going out to all of the industry safe clients. Uh, as part of the update, we're offering a free trial of the home module which means um, it will be free. You'll automatically, or user, if you don't uh, subscribe to the home module already, you'll actually see that tab when you log in, and you'll be able to uh, use it uh, without charge until May 15th. Um, on May 15th, the home module will go away, and that's you have purchased it. Um, it's just really to give our clients the opportunity to test it out and see if it's something they might like in the future. Uh, so the one thing you will notice uh, with the 5.2 update is that there's definitely been a redesign of the home module. We've added new features to existing elements to the home page, and we've also added new elements. Uh, for those of you who don't have the home module and are not sure what it is, it's really a central place you Um, look at a record. Um, you'll always be able to see what records you looked on, you looked at previously. And then this is actually a hyperlink, so you can click on this hyperlink and it'll take you back to the record. You'll also see in the home module a status of uh, open items, um, and uh, at the to appear as the status of an open item, the the status of the record has to equal open. So it's a corrective action with an open status, it's an in inspection with an open status, uh, claims with an open status, or incidents with an open status. And there is some color coding. Uh, so if you don't have any open items, it's going to show up as green. If you have just a couple, it'll be yellow. And then if you have a lot of open items, it will show up as red. And these are just particular to you as the end user. This is just showing me, for example, Claire Epstein's open items. And again, I can click on this hyperlink and it'll take me, I can click on this number and it will take me to my open item. Um, another piece of the home module uh, that's been added is there's now a bubble chart that lets you see at a glance all of the company activity within your organization. Uh, so this is telling you uh, the bigger the bubble is, the more activity there has been. So this is saying that there's been a lot of inspections. And the higher up the, uh, the bubble is in the chart is how many locations that activity is occurring at. So it's a nice global way that lets you see uh, your company activity. And again, it has drill down capability. If you select the bubble, it'll take you uh, to those, those records. Um, again, only allowing you to see what you have privileges to. So this is a global. This will show you everything that's going on globally. It's possible that when you click on inspections, you only have access for certain locations, and then you may not see all of the records. Um, there's also the ability, there's this master add button. All of the uh, modules have the add feature um, in the top, the add button in the top left corner. Uh, now from the home module, you can really add um, any, any type of record. Uh, so you don't have to go to that module to add it. You can just start from the home module. 
And the other piece is that the home module includes the document library. And previously, um, to post documents uh, and store them in the document library, you had to be a um, administrator. And now um, anyone who has access uh, to the document library can post documents there. There's also the ability uh, to see um, new features. I uh, started to see all of tasks and events in the summary screen. Previously, it was kind of difficult to see that it was difficult to see the tasks and events of others in your organization. Now you can navigate uh, using the top navigation in the whole module to the task summary and event summaries. You can see everything that's going on in your organization, assuming, of course, you have the appropriate permissions. Um, okay, um, that's uh, the quick overview of uh, the whole module redesign. Uh, some other changes that we have is we have a summary screen. Um, the summary screens now include multi-select features. So previously, before, when you had a drop-down uh, in the summary screen, you could really only pick uh, one option or all of the options. Now this really gives you the ability to do multi-select. Uh, so, for example, if you have multiple, if you have five regions and you want to look at your data for two of your five regions, you just go in and you uh, check mark the regions you want to see, and the summary screens will show you just those, just those uh, two out of the five regions. For example, this is available on all summary screens, and it's really available for all fields that um, were a uh, more than a yes/no dropdown. You'll be able to have this capability. All right, uh, the other big piece that we've done is we've really improved our reporting features. Uh, we have heard from our clients uh, over the years that they definitely want uh, improved uh, reporting, the ability to have more um, reports that generate more quickly and on the fly, and also the ability to really configure and customize reports. And this. Um, this is really the start that allows you to do it, to do this. We've rolled it out with the incident log, and we will be rolling it out to other modules um, in the release after this. Uh, so there are lots of features in this incident log analysis. I'm going to go through them very quickly. Uh, Gabe will also go through them. We'll have separate webinars to go through some of these details. And again, if folks have questions, they can always set up a time with one of uh, someone on the industry safe team. Uh, to show you this in a little bit more detail. Um, so the incident log uh, has uh, a series of advanced features. It has the ability to export, and it has some header components. And again, to see this, you just uh, go to where you would normally go for the incident log, and you're going to see this whole, whole new screen instead. Um, so some of the things you can do in the header, uh, it, the header components of the instant log is you can refresh the data automatically by clicking refresh. That will update it in real time. You can uh, save uh, the data. Uh, so if you create a specific query, you can uh, save that so it's available for you to use next time. And then load will, um, anything you've saved, it will allow you to pick what you've load. And then if you want to reset it back to the default, you can. You can also export uh, the data that you see in the incident log. You can export it to Excel, a CSV, and a PDF. And just like now, if you do the PDF export, it will include uh, the logo. Any logo you've updated as the report logo will appear in um, the PDF. For the advanced features, there's really lots of capability here. Uh, the first one you can do is you can add your own columns. So you can add a calculated formula column. And Gabe will take you through an example of this. But this is showing you, for example, how to enter, how to create a column that lets you look at the time lag in reporting incidents. You can also change the layout of the incident log. So the incident log has some default columns that display. But if you want to add additional columns to the incident log, you just click that layout. And it, you can then just select what columns you want to display or unselect columns if you don't want to display columns that are, are currently there. The other thing that you can do with the layout, um, with, with the incident log features, you can actually drag and drop uh, columns. 
so that you can uh, change the order of columns by just really uh, using your mouse uh, to change the layout as well. Uh, the sort feature um, allows you to, uh, to do sorts. You can always sort just by clicking on the uh, name of the column, um, and it will sort that column. But if you want to do a cascading sort, so first you want to sort by facility, and then you want to sort by employee name. Uh, you can do that uh, with the sort feature. The other ability you have is that you have this, uh, you can create your own filters. And really, there are multiple ways that you can filter the data. If you want to just see data for the past 30 days, or if I want to see data for the last quarter, or if I just want to see data at a certain facility or with a certain instant type, this really gives you the ability to create your own filters and do that. You can also group data. If you want to look at all data by a certain facility or by a certain department by facility, it allows you to do that. You can also uh, count uh, data. Uh, so I want to see this is showing me for each facility how many incidents I have at each facility, as well as the incident total. Uh, one of my favorite features of this is you can create your own chart. Uh, so for example, I wanted to see uh, my uh, the count of my incidents by facility, which facilities have the most incidents, I can create my chart. I can choose what kind of chart I want to display. And then I can hit this Add to Dashboard button, and I can actually add that chart to the dashboard. Um, and then there's also a cross uh, tab or pivot table that you can create as well. And uh, again, we'll go through some uh, specific examples of uh, pivot tables we think work well with this incident log. Again, if folks have any questions or comments, just send them to me. Just send it using the question feature in the webinar panel, and we'll be happy to, to answer it. Uh, for folks who, already, who are our beta clients um, and who may be on the webinar, if you have any comments on the incident log or any of the updates, uh, send those along too. We always like to hear them. Um, and then paging. You can also choose how many, I, how many rows you want to see on uh, your pages. We've also updated the dashboard so it has a little bit more of a look, a new look and feel. You'll notice that um, the dashboards themselves have a different color scheme, and then the tabs within the dashboards also look different as well. We've also updated the default tab, uh, just so if you are using those default settings, you'll be able to. Uh, we've sort of cleaned up what what we think uh, the default should be. There are also some other updates uh, to the software that we've made. Uh, one is there's now advanced uh, email notification tracking uh, for emails that you send within Industry Safe. So not the automatic emails, but the ones where you actually hit the send email button. There's now more tracking on uh, what the message, uh, the date and time, and any message you added, uh, you'll be able to see that uh, better. There's also a new um, email alert. If you close the hazard, you can now send out automatic email notifications. And for folks that are using the claims module, there's now a uh, claims payment log as well. There are lots of resources uh, for 5.2. We'll go over this again at the end of the webinar. Um, but uh, please don't be shy about contacting us with questions. All right, any uh, questions or comments from anyone in the group before I turn it over to Gabe? And Gabe's actually going to walk us through the updates um, on our demo site. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, I'm going to take you into our demo site. Uh, the site will look a little bit different than um, your actual site, just because it hasn't, been, you know, you, you've customized your site or configured it. Uh, but all the features that I show you today, you will have access to. Uh, the first piece, as we mentioned, is the uh, the calendar or the sorry, the home module. And within there, we've made a lot of different. Uh, updates. We, you know, updated this file so it looks much better. Um, we've, you know, rearranged how tasks and events are displayed. We've updated the calendar. Here you can see the, the green date is today's date, and anything we had an event is in orange. You can now click these View All buttons to actually view a list of all tasks or events. Um, previously, you could only see the ones assigned to you. Now. Assuming you have the right permissions, you can see tasks and events for all users. Uh, and again, we have that for both tasks and events. In addition, 
This new Add button within the Home module allows you to add any type of record. Um, so if you did want to add a task or event, uh, from here you could do it. You could also add an incident, a hazard, an observation. Uh, we've also added the ability to add to the document library right from the Home module. And it works just like all the others. You just click the Add button, and it takes you to that location. And now if I go back to the home module, uh, you can see here there's new style for events. And again, anything else displayed will be listed here as well uh, for the future. As far as, as new features go, we have now added the ability to see your recent items. So if you looked at an employee or a, an incident, it would be listed here. And you could simply click on that to go to that record. So I want to go see the corrective action I was looking at before. I can easily do that. Uh, it gives you your company activity for the last 30 days. So you can see here there have been uh, a lot of inspections. Uh, there have been 61 inspections at 13 locations. And again, the bigger the bubble, the more records were added. And the higher up it is, the more locations um, it was added to. And again, you can hover over those. And you can click on an individual bubble to actually go to that module and see those records. Uh, assuming you do have permission to see them, then, then it will bring up that related summary screen. And then finally, under My Open Items, it gives you a list of your open incidents, claims, inspections, and corrective actions. Uh, as Claire mentioned, if you have none open, be, it'll be a zero. It's in green. If you have one to three, it'll be in yellow. And then otherwise, it's shaded in, in red. And again, you can click right on the number to go to that module and see your open uh, records. Any questions about the new home module? OK, for those of you who are not familiar with it, um, it does also include under documents the ability to uh, see a document library, which is a list of all the doc of um, documents that you can provide to end users. You can upload any type of document, really just sort of resources for users. And then also within there, there's a supporting document summary it lists all of the supporting documents for all the records that you have access to, and it tells you what record it was it's linked to and things like that. So again, as Claire mentioned, everyone will have access to the home module uh, until May 15th. Uh, if you want to keep it past there, just notify us. Otherwise, uh, we'll turn it off on, on May 15th. Okay, moving on to the, the next big update is the summary screens and the ability to do multi-select filtering. So now if you click the search, search icon here on the summary screen, you'll see for a lot of most of the, the drop downs before where you could only select one value, now you can look at, at one or more. And you simply check off the ones you want to see. And then click search if you want to look at all the incidents at two out of your four facilities or something like that. You could easily do that. Um, again, the same thing goes, say you just want to look at your um, incidents that are not complete. You can do that. Uh, and the only ones we haven't changed are the ones where there's really two, only two options. So you're looking at everything or just the open or closed ones. Pretty intuitive, but it is something we, we have gotten a lot of requests for. So we think that that will be a, uh, a popular feature. Moving on, the, the next big update is this new incident log, uh, or, or greatly improved, depending on how you want to look at it. So now, as Claire said, to get to it, you go to the same place under reports and analysis, the incidents log. And you can see it right away. It's obviously a new report before where everything, you had to set your filters, and then it opened as a PDF, and it wasn't very dynamic. Uh, now we, we've really strived to make this a much more uh, dynamic experience uh, and, and interactive. So um, right off the bat, the, the report loads. Um, it gives you all your data, and then it's up to you to filter that and, and group it and arrange it as you'd like. Uh, and I'm just going to go through the different options that are available. Um, 
So here in the, in the header, uh, if you click this info icon, it'll give you a little description of the report. And if you click on that, it'll open an end user guide that describes everything I'm about to go through. And it, uh, you can also uh, refresh the data, which just refreshes it. You can, once you've arranged and configured your uh, incident log, you can save it so that you can load it, you know, bring back previous ones you've had. So if I click this load, you can see here I have this 90-day incident history. I can click on that, and it's going to bring back an analysis grid that I've configured. And then you can also reset to go back to the default. Also down here, we have options to uh, export records to Excel. So if you click that Excel icon, it'll ask you to open the Excel file. So you can see here, just a simple export to Excel of all the data. Uh, and then I can also do it to a comma separated value file and also a PDF. And again, in the PDF, it's a fairly straightforward uh, PDF, but then you can use this to export it, send it to Word or Excel, or print it out, uh, or email it. When I go back. Um, there's a, a couple different, or a lot of different features or, or functions that are available here through these, these different buttons. And I'm just going to go through those one by one. Um, so if I click the formula button, it allows me to specify or add a new column with the formula. Um, and I'm just going to use a, a sample that we came up with, which is the, uh, the time lag in reporting an incident. So if we want to say, and again, there's a, a guide as far as what functions and formulas there are. You just click this formula help, and it takes you to a help section on how to specify those formulas. The, the incident, and then I'm going to compare that to the uh, date reported. And this is going to be a number field, uh, and for number format, I'm just going to choose this first option here. And then once you're done creating your formula, you need to give it a, a name. And then I can add that to my, uh, my report. And you can see here then, assuming it had some numbers, those would display here. Um, you can then arrange columns. You can drag them around. Uh, you can click on any of these columns to sort them. So if I just wanted to sort by date of incident, I just click that, change the sorting. By default, it's in descending order. But I can easily change that. Um, I can click this Layout button to choose what columns are visible. So, we, so by default, we only show a, a limited set of, of columns, but you can easily enable or disable additional columns. Uh, so say I wanted to see you know, who the supervisor and preparer were. Just click OK. And then I can hide that by clicking that button again. And now it's got the supervisor uh, on there. The next thing I can do is I can sort records. Uh, in addition to cl clicking on column headings, I can choose to sort by uh, multiple columns. So if I want to sort by facility and then date of incident, uh, you just choose the, the field you want to sort on, choose the direction, and then click Add. And then you can easily, you know, you wanted to remove something, you can remove those as well. If you want to add a filter, you click the filter button. 
Um, so right now we're just looking at incidents within the last 90 days. Say I wanted to change that to um, or add to that anything that where a specific facility was involved. I'm going to look at 111 Main and if I also want to look um, anything that was involved in two different facilities. And then you want to change this from an and to an or, you just click that. So now I'm looking at everything in the last 90 days that was at either the 111 main facility or the Advantage Solution facility. You can also add groupings. So if you click the grouping, you could group by, say we wanted to group by facility. You can easily do that. And then you want to add a secondary, you want to group by um, department. You can do that as well. Um, you can add aggregates. So say so you want an account of total incidents. So you can see here it'll give us, there's 37 incidents total, 27 at this 111 main facility, and then 10 at the Advantage Solution one. Uh, next is the ability to create charts. I'm just going to reset some of this to, to get a little more data. So now if I click the chart button, um, you can add any type of, any of these chart types. So I'll just show you two examples. Say you want to look at uh, report status. And so we're going to do a pie chart, and we're just going to count the number of incidents. Uh, if we minimize that table, now you can see here's our chart of incidents by report status, and you can easily expand that. And then say I also want to look at a line chart of incidents reported by month. So I'm going to look at date of incident, uh, let's say quarter, and then I'm going to count incidents. And again, I can minimize that table. And so now there's my other chart, and here's the number of incidents uh, that occurred each month. Um, also, with these charts that we've created, there's the ability to add them to the dashboard. So you just click Add to Dashboard, um, put in a title, a description. And you can add that to your dashboard. Another option here is to create a cross tab or um, a cross tab table. Uh, so you're going to select your column header. So I'm going to go with the uh, incident type. And label values will go with um, worker type. And then we're going to count incidents. So now, again, that's going to appear below the, the main table and the charts. So here you can see it lists the incident types and how many incidents there were for each worker type. And again, you have the ability to export that to Excel, CSV, or PDF as well. And then finally, with paging, you have the ability to change how many records are displayed on each page of the table. And so now I'll get a lot more records here. Any questions about the incident analysis, the new uh, incident log? OK. Um, if we go to the dashboard, I'll show you the, um, 
the chart that I added, it just goes to whatever your last active tab was. So you can see here, I've got the, uh, the chart that I added. Uh, and I can easily resize that as well. And if you wanted to remove it, you can click that X. And then you can always add it back later by clicking this change dashboard so you don't lose it completely. Or just search for line chart. See here, and then I do have the ability if I don't want any more to remove it. So I just click Add Now, Show Dashboard, and then I've added it back. Okay, um, and then you'll also notice when you log in that the style of the dashboard has been updated. It looks a little bit cleaner. The, the color scheme has changed a little bit. Um, things like that. The next feature I'll show you, we have a couple other um, smaller updates. Uh, we've added the ability to do some advanced tracking with uh, email notifications. So that's when you uh, go to any, any recording form, any of the modules, and you click that e send email button. Now at the bottom um, where it lists, before it lists who it was sent to, now it lists who sent the email. So now if I click send email, you'll see a log here of everyone who sent emails, who, who sent the email, who was sent to, the email address, the date and time it was sent, and what, what message was included with the email. And again, that's available for all the modules and all the forms. Uh, we also have a new alert that's sent when a hazard is closed. Uh, so when the hazard is closed, the the person who reported it is sent an email back notifying them that it's been closed um, and things like that, just an informative thing. And then finally we have a new claims payment log. So now if we go to the claim payment log, uh, again you can filter by location, claim number, type of claim, category, date range, um, and it will bring you back a list of the payments grouped by claim, or sorry, by location. So here it'll group these by location, give you the claim number, the payment number, all that information. Along with the total number of payments and total amount paid. So those are all of the new features that are included in this release. Uh, if you don't have the 5.2 update yet, uh, you'll get it next week and you will see a, a pop-up when you first log in after your site's been updated notifying you of the update. Uh, it'll have a link in it to the, um, the uh, release notes that, that contain all the information that we just reviewed along with a link to the PowerPoint slide. And also if you go to system functions up here, you can always click on the industry safe 5.2 release notes uh, to view those as well. And again, these cover all the things we just talked about. There is uh, also a link to the PowerPoint that, that Claire showed you and links to um, view the recordings of the webinars that we've conducted so far. So you simply click on those links if you wanted to send this to someone else or review uh, the webinar we had today. There are no questions. I was going to turn it back over to Claire for a final wrap up. Uh, and I also want to say if you do have uh, comments or, or requests for new features, we always like to hear those. Uh, you can always email or call us or go to our support page uh, and submit a feature request as well. Let's call for questions. Okay, uh, great. This is Claire. Um, really, uh, not much more to say except if you do have any comments, uh, please let us know. Um, and uh, please, uh, please, you know, don't be shy and um, explore the user guides and things like that. And let us know how we can be of help to you. And thank you, everyone, for attending. Uh, it, as I said, it is recorded. Uh, so you will get a link uh, to the recorded webinar that you can uh, share with others. Thanks so much.